Hi, welcome to this lecture on TCP port scanning. Now, in some of the previous lectures, we did kind of an overview of networking, things that you should have remembered, and a broad overview of port scanning, kind of describing what it's used for and a brief introduction to Nmap. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to look in a lot more detail on one specific feature of Nmap, which is TCP port scanning. We're going to talk about how it works, et cetera, et cetera. So before you can understand TCP port scanning, we have to talk about TCP. Now, as you may remember from a networking course, TCP is the Transmission Control Protocol, and it's a transport layer protocol. And it guarantees reliable order delivery of data. And what that means is that if a sender sends five packets, then the receiver gets those five packets in the same order. TCP will provide a guaranteed receiving of the packet and the guaranteed ordering of the packets. Uh, TCP is used for most internet services. So things like HTTP, SSH, pretty much any email protocol, et cetera, et cetera. Most uh, applications you use online are going to involve TCP. So the header of a TCP packet, or the TCP header within that packet, uh, contains uh, a few items. The first would be the source port, uh, then the destination port, which is the port on the destination server machine you're trying to connect to. Then it has two fields for the sequence number and the ACK number. Now, these two numbers are used together to track how many bytes have been sent and received by each party in the communication. After those two, we have the flags field. Now, the flags field is a bit field with nine bits that's used to signify what kind of TCP packet we're looking at. Let's look in a little bit more detail on the flags field. Okay, so as I said, it's nine bits. And those nine bits you can see listed up above in the chart. Uh, but the truth is we only care about six of them for our purposes in terms of port scanning. Uh, the SYN field, synchronize. The ACK field, the acknowledgement field. The RESET field. The FIN or FINISH field. The PUSH field. And the URGENT field. Now I'm not going to go into details into exactly what each of these flags means. That's something more suited for a networking course. But you need to know at least that these six are used for the port scanning that we're going to be discussing. So if we're going to do port scanning with TCP, uh, what do we need to do? Well, in order to port scan for TCP ports, you need to understand how TCP initiates connections. Because ultimately, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start initiating connections with ports. And we're going to see how they respond. So what does TCP do for that? Hopefully, you remember that TCP uses the infamous three-way handshake to initiate a connection. So let's look at what the three-way handshake looks like if we're connecting to an open port, a closed port, and a filtered port. So if I'm connecting to an open port in TCP, uh, here's what my three-way handshake looks like. First, my client sends a SYN packet with a random sequence number. It just picks a random number for the sequence number. We're going to call that A. And so it generates this packet, and it sets the SYN flag in the flags field, and just the SYN flag, and it sends that to the server. The server receives that packet, and it replies with a SYNAC packet. And in the SYNAC packet, the ACK number is set to A plus 1. A was that random number generated by the client. And the sequence number is set to B, which is a random number generated by this server. And it sends that back to the client. The client receives the SYNAC packet and replies with an ACK. And an ACK packet is just a packet with the ACK flag set sends that to the server, and now our connection is established and can proceed. So the client and server could exchange normal packets, and they've opened up their connection. So this is the three-way handshake. The first packet is the SYN packet, then is the SYN ACK packet, and then the reply with the ACK packet. So three packets in order to initiate a connection in TCP. Now if I'm connecting to a closed port, or trying to connect to a closed port, let's say, well, the, the first step's the same. The client sends a SYN packet with a random sequence number, sends that to the server. And in this case, the server sees the packet and says, this port's not open. So it replies with a reset. Sends the reset back to the client so that the client knows, you tried to open a connection with me, but I don't have a service on that port. Last, if I'm connecting uh, to a filtered port, something, let's say, where there's a firewall in place, well, then my client generates the same SYN packet with the random sequence number, sends that to the server, but on the way, the firewall gets it and throws it away. So the server itself never really sees my SYN packet. And so there is no step two, because the server never replies. 
So if I do get a successful connection, then both sides exchange packets with data. And when they do that, the sequence number is continually updated with the number of bytes sent, and the acknowledgement number is, is updated to reflect how many bytes have been received. Um, and so the, the two sides keep those numbers um, synchronized, uh, and that's how they make sure that packets are received in order and that they received all of the data. On most of these packets that are sent after connecting for data exchange, the ACK flag is set. It's just an ACK packet. Uh, and when, when one side decides that they are done, they send a fin packet, finish, to terminate the connection. Okay, so let's look at the different types of TCP scans that Nmap can do. Now that you understand the through-way handshake, we can talk through these scans a little bit more, and hopefully you'll understand how they work. Nmap provides eight different types of TCP scans, and in addition to that, you can also manually specify which flags you want to set in a packet. Remember I said that there were nine bits for the flags? Well, you can pick exactly which of those nine bits you want on to send a packet to a port. Um, but out of the eight ones that Nmap provides by default, we're going to look at six of them right now. The first is a TCP connect scan. And the syntax for how to use it is written here, nmap-st, and then the IP address you're going to scan. And the, a connect scan uses the operating system connect function uh, to do a full three-way handshake. And so connect is, is a library function provided by the operating system, and it just initiates a TCP connection to a port. When you do this, you initiate a full three-way handshake. You do the syn, they reply with the synac, you reply with the ack, and it's a full connection. Now, when nmap does this, it, depending on how connect responds will help us determine what the status of that port is. So if connect succeeds, then the port is open. If connect fails, then the port is closed. If connect times out, then the port is filtered. So the connect function from the operating system will simply tell me what the status of the port was. I want to make an important note here that if there's a service on the port, it registers a connection. So for example, if I have a web server running on port 80 and I use a connect scan to scan port 80, well, the web server will, will in its log file, will get a note that says there was a connection from your IP to that port. And that's because you did a full connection. You, know, you made the full connection and the web server got informed of your connection. The next type of TCP scan is a SYN scan. We call it a SYN scan because it involves sending a SYN packet. And the, the, the command line argument is here, S, capital S. And this sends a single SYN packet to the port that's being scanned. If it gets a reply after it sends its packet, then it sends a reset to terminate the connection. So a SYN scan does not complete the three-way handshake. It'll send the SYN packet, and maybe the other side will send a SYN act, and then uh, Nmap will immediately send a reset. And the goal here is to not complete the three-way handshake. So what, what's our port status, depending on the response to the SYN packet? Well, if we get a SYN act reply, then that means the port is open, because that's the second packet in the three-way handshake. If we get a reset reply, that means that the port is closed. And if there's no reply, then that means that the port is filtered. Now, a SYN scan, because it does not actually complete the three-way handshake, is faster than a connect scan. You can send SYN packets to a lot of ports and follow them up with resets, and you don't actually have to initiate a full connection, so it's more quick. Another benefit of a SYN scan over a connect scan is that if there's a service on the port, like a web server, it doesn't register that a connection occurred. And the reason for that is that the three-way handshake never finished. So if you don't finish the three-way handshake, then the operating system never even notifies the service that a connection was even tried. Now, the operating system knows, and a potential firewall in the middle could know that a connection was attempted, but the service itself doesn't know. Okay, so the next three types of scans are all lumped together. And these are the null, fin, and Christmas scan. Um, and the reason they're lumped together is that they're all basically the same type of scan, just with different flags set. And the syntax here would be nmap-s, and you pick one of those three letters. So if, if you want to do a, a null scan, it's dash sn, or a fin scan, dash sf, or a Christmas scan, it's dash sx, you know, for example. So the TCP standard, and the says that a closed port should respond with reset if any packet other than reset is received. So the idea is, if you have a machine sitting on the internet, no firewall, and you send a random packet to it, it should respond with reset to inform you that I don't know you and we're not engaged in a communication. 
So uh, a null packet that would be used in the null scan is a packet with no flag set. A fin packet is a packet with just the fin flag set. And a Christmas scan is a packet with the fin push and urgent flag set. Um, now, why is that called a Christmas scan? Because whoever uh, made it up decided that if you set three bits inside of the nine bits in the flags field, they said, oh, it's kind of like lighting up a Christmas tree. I don't really think, yeah, whatever. It's a strange name, but that's what it is. So if we send one of these types of scans, if we send this one of these types of packets, what kind of replies do we get and what does it mean? Well, if we get a reset reply, that means that the port is closed because that's what the TCP standard says should happen. If you send one of these packets to a closed port, the machine should respond with reset. If I get no reply, then the port is either open or filtered. Um, if I might, and that's because there's two reasons I might get no reply. If the port is filtered, then that means that my uh, null fin or Christmas packet was dropped, and so there would be no reply. If the port is open, I would have the same issue, actually. Not that, not that the packet got dropped, but that the TCP standard doesn't specify that a reset should be sent. It's just that the packet isn't used. So uh, these scans, unlike the SYN scan and the CONNECT scans, are not as useful for helping me understand exactly whether a port is open, closed, or filtered. Instead, all it can distinguish between is the port is definitely closed or the port is open or filtered. You know, I can't really uh, distinguish between the three. I just have the two possibilities. Now, the last type of TCP scan we're going to look at is called the ACK scan. And the syntax for this is dash S capital A. Now, an ACK scan just sends an ACK packet, a packet with just the ACK bit set in the field. So based on the reply that I get, let's look at uh, what that means for our port. So if I get a reset in reply, that means that the port is either open or closed. Now, and the reason for this is that if it's an open port and I send in an ACK packet, well, then that port will look at the ACK packet and say, well, this, would, this is the kind of packet I would expect to get from someone who already has an open connection with me but you don't have an open connection with me. We never did a three-way handshake, so I'm going to send you a reset to inform you that, we, that we're not actually talking. If the, pack, if the port is closed, we would also get a reset for the same reason that the null and the fin scans send a reset. If there's no reply, then the port is filtered. So if you look carefully at this, you'll realize that this really only helps me determine if a port is filtered or unfiltered. I don't know anything about whether it's really open or closed. It's just filtered or unfiltered. Okay, so why do the null, fin, and Christmas act scans get used? Like, why would we do that? They don't give us the kind of information we really want, right? Like, uh, the SYN scan will tell me, will allow me to e easily distinguish between the three possibilities of the port statuses, open, closed, or filtered. But these last four scan types, uh, they give me less information. Well, the goal of these last four is to get around a potentially poorly configured firewall. So, for example, um, maybe the firewall blocks SYN packets, uh, new connections because it doesn't want new incoming connections, but it might allow ACK packets because it thinks, well, maybe they're related to existing connections. Well, if that's the case, then my ACK scan, for example, could potentially get through. You, you probably won't use these uh, much, but they are good to at least know about. So let's sum up what we talked about. Uh, TCP packets have a variety of flags that help signify what kind of packet that they are. And Nmap can send different types of TCP packets and watch the replies to determine the port status. And I'll just add this as a quick note here. When in doubt, use a SYN scan. It's the fastest, most common type of scan used, and it's surprisingly effective for most purposes.